Welcome to Ford Mod Motor Training Part 11. This video we're going to be taking a look at calibrating our mass airflow calibration table using our logged fuel trim data in our VCM scanner. So we're going to be introducing a histogram, learning how to work with this, learning how to filter out bad data, and then transferring the data that we're capturing back into our math curve so we can constantly update our airflow and fuel modeling. We have a lot to learn, so let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to properly tune our math calibration curve using log data from our VCM scanner and working with a histogram feature. Now, before we go in and talk about how to calibrate it, there's some things I want to get out of the way right off the bat here. But first, we need to open up a calibration file to start off with to discuss a few of these details. Now, this particular vehicle that we're working with was our supercharged V6 Mustang from our training tutorial that we were covering how to read and write a calibration file using our VCM software suite. So we want to open up that file, the file that we saved out, and we saved it as a new name. That's what we're going to be starting with in this video here. So let's go to File Open. Within my folder that I've created, 2005 V16, V6 Mustang, we're going to be grabbing base file one. So original is what we saved out, and then base files one is what we immediately saved as a new name using that save as feature. So again, we didn't overwrite the original file that came out of our PCM read. So let's go here and click open for this particular file. And then I'm gonna move in here to engine, and then we're gonna be moving in here to airflow and into general. And we're specifically taking a look at our airflow versus voltage curve. Now, a few things I wanna get out of the way right off the bat, and, the, and, and how we're gonna be moving through this video, the assumptions we're gonna be making. Um, we need to make sure that we have a known math curve that we can trust, to begin this process. And two, the biggest aspect here of being able to edit your math curve is having injector data that you know is right, that you can trust. Uh, because we don't wanna go in and start to tune our math curve. If we're finding that our fuel and airflow modeling relationship is off, if we've misrepresented our injector data, we know that that's gonna be skewing up or potentially skewing up our fuel delivery. And we'll find that when we're trying to work with the calibration methods and techniques I cover in this video using our VCM scanner in what's called a histogram, we're gonna be absorbing some of that fuel air or the difference between what we should be uh, getting with our fuel delivery, converting fuel mass and into ejector pulse width. We'll find that there's gonna be an error percentage of fuel, fuel uh, uh, um, correction that needs to be made and we would correct it in our math curve. That's uh, using the techniques I'm showing in this video. That's gonna create a whole bunch of problems because we can start to skew or misrepresent our airflow coming into our PCM from our mass airflow sensor through our math curve here. We don't wanna do that. So we have to make sure if you're gonna be following along with what I show you in this video, you have known good injector data that you can trust. You know that's spot on. Either Ford Racing injectors, stock injectors, or ID injectors. And I provided that in our Excel spreadsheet here. If we go down, we have all of our se a separate uh, tabs here, we can grab all of that documented data that's in the format for HP Tuner. So you've used this, um, you've used the data here, or you're on stock injectors, you know that's going to be valid. And we have a math curve that we know is ballpark. We know that we're starting off with something that's going to be pretty reasonable. Now this particular car, this example, has larger injectors, the Ford Racing injectors, I've put all the calibration data in already, and it has a stock math housing and a stock math sensor. So we know we can trust the math curve. That's really, really big uh, a, a aspect here of using this calibration technique that I'm gonna be showing you, because again, we don't want to account for any kind of fuel error uh, uh, in the, the fuel injector data, any kind of uh, fuel deviations we're finding that, uh, that, that's in our fuel model that are gonna be absorbed into our airflow model. Because if we misrepresent the airflow, that can disrupt our idle airflow trims, which can disrupt all of the idle control, It'll start to disrupt the torque modeling going on in the PCM, which if you're on an automatic transmission can create shifting problems and or it can start to skew up how the drive by wire system is going to work. We can actually have drivability problems with drive by wire because everything is driven off torque, which is going to be a function of airflow coming from our math curve. So the math curve is super important. This is one of the uh, very most important things that we're going to be calibrating in our PCM. And we want to make sure that everything is done properly. So. That's the two premises that we're going to be starting off with this video. Good injector data, known math curve. So um, the next few things I want to talk about are things that we have to do to the file to prep it to make sure that when we're going to be calibrating our math sensor, that we're calibrating just the math curve and we don't have anything else influencing what is going on with our airflow model. And that's going to be any kind of filtrations that's going on in the background or any kind of speed density calculation that are gonna go on in the background. Now the Fords are 80 to 90% math air, mass airflow driven, so they're gonna be primarily math based. However, they do have a speed density 
aspect or portion in the background that does start to compare against what our airflow registration is coming from our math, and it can skew what the airflow and load registration is going to be, which we don't want to have that happen. So if we're going to be tuning the mass, mass airflow sensor, we need to go in and turn off our checkboxes in our calibration file. Let's go in here. We're going to be first going into math adaption, making sure that's set to disable. Math adaption will go in and not look at any of the keep alive memory error that it's going to be finding in the airflow modeling. So we actually can store in the memory of the PCM um, data as it starts to run, looking at airflow and load, it can start to skew what the mass airflow is going to be registering if we have that enabled. Now we want to have that disabled so that we can calibrate the math curve and we can trust it and we know it's right and then we can always turn it back on after we're done and I typically do, I do typically turn on the math adaption and leave it enabled. Now the cylinder air filter, this is going to be providing a filtering effect. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.